Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. Before we get started today, this is an incredible diorama. I've worked really hard on it. It's part four, a reimagining of the Oni Bridge and I'm so excited to show you all. But first we gotta talk about something important to me. I'm gonna start this video maybe as uh, not expected with a bit of a honest piece of feedback of the last six months. I'm gonna try and tell this as honestly as possible. Um, YouTube kind of sucks sometimes, particularly with money. Money makes YouTube go round, and obviously if you want to do it full time like me, money has to be an enormous part of it because I have to keep myself going, I have to be financially viable. And the problem there is that YouTube, which I consider my art form, gets mixed up with money. And money is uh, the biggest killer of art, really. It's the biggest duller of expressionism. It's the main way that, it's the main reason that people can't express themselves, right? I've been going through this really difficult part of my life where for the last six months, I've been 100% self-employed on YouTube, which has been wonderful. I've found a much better a work-life balance. Uh, my mental health is so much better and a lot of things are going in the right direction and I can make way more content. But I've felt a huge pressure to make money on YouTube, huge. Every time I make a video, uh, at the back of my mind, there's an anxiety that it's not 10 minutes long because 10 minutes or more makes more money. I always hate that I have to show ads on these videos because they're my creative art space and I don't want ads interrupting the flow of my videos. It's really difficult not to have that. I also have copyright flags on random videos like my Toymation announcement video was flagged for copyright and they put so many ads in that video and I didn't even get the money. I'm trying to do full time on YouTube. That's what I want to do. That's my, uh, my ambition, my goal in life and I want to create content that is loved by others and helps people through their own mental health struggles. I want to slowly move away from my reliance on YouTube ad revenue, which right now it's 100%. That's why today I'm announcing that I've relaunched my Patreon. I did a Patreon about a year and a half ago and I overpromised and I overhyped it. Now I've reduced it down to three tiers, a $3 tier that is literally just helping me out with a couple of fun Discord perks, then a $10 tier and a $25 tier. You don't have to, but if you love my content and you want some bonus videos, you want some bonus blog posts, and you want some really cool shout outs in my videos, I'm gonna start doing more and more outrageous shout outs for my patrons. If you wanna support me there, please do check out my patron. It's linked in the description and in this video. It literally helps me go forward and continue to make free content. And hopefully, if my Patreon eventually gets big enough, I can start to reduce the ads that I show on YouTube. And without further ado, let's roll on with this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. And thank you so much to the patrons that have been supporting me over the last two years. So yeah, thank you. Here's the diorama. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 that was a terrible rendition. All right, welcome everybody. This is part four of my Oni Bridge Diorama build. I think when I do part five, which I'll get into later, I'm going to show the entire build process. This was just something that I I got inspiration for late at night, you know? I was uh, lying in bed and I, I just thought to myself, man, I really wish I'd continued making dioramas. Like, I mean, I, I have continued making dioramas. My channel's been full of them. But, you know, recently, since I got back to England, I've been preparing for my brother's wedding, which was last weekend and went fantastically. Since then, I've not done any diorama work and I really really had been wishing to myself that I had. So, you know, I got out of bed, I just uh, started building and I continued building in the morning and it came out just beautifully. So you'll have already seen some things that I'm really proud of. First of all, yes, this is my Oni bridge. My previous video was a trilogy looking at the previous three videos I've made building this bridge all in 2020. I really love going back and looking at those sticky sort of uh, detonators. I, I just think they look so great on the, uh, the bridge support beams. I've basically replaced I started by taking most of the figures down and uh, just starting again. I left a few things up. I left the jump pack brutes and the drones up, uh, you know, mostly. And I also left the gold hunters up. But the majority of the stuff I started again with, and I did try to replace a lot of the figures with new articulation. There was still a lot of old articulation on this bridge. I would love to have more jump pack brutes, but uh, that's for another day. I still only have old articulation, really, bar a few. I started by having a brute on 
honor guard at the front of the bridge. This used to be an old articulation brute honor guard and I replaced him with my gorgeous Halo 2 anniversary monkey, which is my favorite figure of last year for sure. Up here we have the NMPD Hornet. This was here in the last build, but now an NMPD trooper is firing at a jump pack brute. And in 2020, I also didn't really have any muzzle flares. Now I have so many, so there's a lot on this bridge and I even did some covenant muzzle flares too. All right, we've got the AC Jackals in the corner. They remained. I love how we've got a half AC Jackal and then the legendary full AC Jackal just hiding off in the corner there. Those uh, old ACs go yellow after a while. It is a bit of a shame. All right, we've got a dead Halo 2 anniversary brute lying on the Warthog. I really loved uh, using the EVA's last stand and the original Scorpion and those flame effects give a really good sort of, uh, what would you say, a realistic effect to the destruction. We've got Dutch on the bridge. He's heavily outnumbered and he's going to be looking to retreat as quick as possible. He's just been finishing arming the detonators and now he's going to fall back to that tower. A few NMPD there. They're pushing through and I love how they've got riot shields. They're just trying to hold back the invasion as much as possible. One's fallen and lost his shield, probably to that jackal sniper. And then look at this. Ah. Oh. A jump pack bullfrog. Is it bullfrog or bulldog? Something. A jump pack ODST shotgunning a jump pack brute in the uh, chest. And when I've got a figure that's been damaged, I like to move the head like sort of I blue tack it. So it's coming off the ball joint. It looks like it's really just popping out of its socket. And I've also replaced the majority of weapons with colored weapons. Here's a nice example of a colored weapon. I always like when I'm positioning figures, you know, he is firing at that grunt, sure, but he's got other problems to deal with. So his face isn't going to be locked on the grunt. You know, it's easy when figures are firing at each other to just have those two looking at each other, but it's a, it's a little more complex than that. The grunt's head's been shot by, by the bullet. He has two grenades, but he only got a chance to charge one of them, so that's probably going to take out that Marine. But the Marine is actually focused on his buddy over here being skewered by the brute shot from a Halo 2 Marine. Uh, Marine. <laughs> That's a brute. I have included a mix of Halo 2 and Halo 3 on this because the invasion of New Mombasa kind of takes place between Halo 2 and 3. And realistically, there's no reason that Halo 2 and 3 Marines should have had any kind of aesthetic upgrade between the two games. Right, we've got the rookie. He's trying to give some cover for this ODST that's got to get back to the tower for sniper support. He had some kind of radio backpack, though I think that might have had the charges inside. And Dutch is obviously going to try and get back to uh, the rookie as quick as possible. And yes, I've included that one Halo 2 anniversary or Halo 3 anniversary elite. You know, this was during the Great Schism, so I just wanted to put one dead elite in there to symbolize the fight between the elites and the brutes. And he has the Arbiter versus Master Chief Carbine, one of the best painted weapons of all time. Moving behind the Scorpion, we originally just had one smoke ODST, but now we've got a pair. I got a second one from a Chinese seller and they just look so great together. Moving into the main defense, we got a lot of Halo 2 Marines here led by Sergeant Johnson. He's just kind of looking uh, maybe in dismay a bit. And I gave Johnson a smoke shotgun, like a translucent shotgun. Don't really know why. It just felt right at the time. Then all these Halo 2 Marines are scrambling to get it together. These two having a little conversation. Maybe one of them saying, we need to get out of here. And he's saying, no, we need to stand our ground. And one more Marine looking towards Johnson for support. You know, they're going to want good leadership here. They need to uh, figure out what's next. He's got a silenced SMG there. And just looking towards Johnson for the next command. They uh, all seem to be scrambling. I think these Covenant, uh, you know, this is coming in waves, right? There's a lot of dead bodies at the back of this base, which I think uh, tells you that there was a base invasion that they held off, and then suddenly reinforcements have come in massive numbers and quickly overwhelmed the bridge. Dutch thought he had more time. That's why he's in the middle of this fight. He was placing the charges down quite casually, and then suddenly the Covenant came in mass. Like, there's literally drones on top of the command tower. So it's going to be an absolute chaos over comms. We've also got a couple more back there. One with a chain gun and one with an assault rifle and a little armory bay back there. At the top of the tower, it's not looking good for the UNSC. We got drones, we got jump pack brutes. One of them's firing a shot off and one of them has a gravity hammer. He's about to wreak absolute havoc, right? Like he's about to just grand slam over loads of the Marines. It's gonna be a really messy sight. I do love that firing brute shot and I love how you can suspend, if you're careful, uh, these drones over like a little piece of soft, uh, what would you call it? Elasticated plastic? I don't know what you'd call it. Oh no, there he goes. Well, you can have them sort of hovering through the air anyway. This is also one of the first times I've used Covenant muzzle flares. I've uh, had them on a couple of my drones. 
drones. I think they work pretty nicely. This drone is firing down at this Marine here. He's trying to help out his buddy who has clearly just fallen and uh, <laughs> it's probably not gonna get back up in this situation because it's not looking good for any of them. Drones galore. I mean, they're, they're kind of, they come in swarms. So as many as possible, in my opinion. I need drones in a new blind bag series because I'll just army build the absolute mercy out of them. They just look fantastic. That new ODST hive exterminator is gonna be a beast. And one of these drones here, oh, he's picked up one of the uh, NMPD troopers. It's not looking good. You, you're gonna get pulled apart on top of this tower, I guarantee it. There are brute bodies scattered along the floor. Hence why I said probably a first uh, invasion party came and was defeated. This one's missing a leg and a couple of other pieces of limbs. There's another drone flying through the air here and he's attacking my favorite ODSTs. Ah, oh, they just look gorgeous. They're an absolute team. This one's got the uh, target locator or the drone remote for the drone. He's uh, controlling that bad boy. And then two gorgeous looking Halo 2 anniversary brutes coming over the top of here. Oh, they look so good. They are honestly one of the best figures Mega's ever made. You cannot tell me different. That's gotta hurt. I also adjusted the head on this one on blue tack. It can look a little more to the side than the normal ball joint allows. The NMPD car looking great. And then this drop pod here. I love the position this ODST is in, like he's just slung that SMG around his back. He's also got a jump pack attached. Got a guy climbing up desperately. He's clearly the NMPD commander in gray. A sniper from Romeo. Another sniper is reloading over here. Maybe his guns jam. And two more NMPD running down here. You know, it's not all about everyone firing. There's gotta be a story to everything. Guns jam, you run out of ammo. Some people try and run away. I've also added a few trees here and there and the piece de resistance over by the ODST pod. What do we have here, I wonder? Oh no. Part five of this Oni Bridge diorama transcend into chaos as the flood invade in full force. It's gonna be a flood firefight diorama. That'll be part five and I'm gonna show how I'm building the entire thing. I'm gonna do step-by-step -step building and it's gonna be my absolute magnum opus of my dioramas. Flood firefight, baby. It's coming very soon. Tons more detail, tons more figures, lots more character, all the drama. This is part four of my Oni Bridge diorama and it's packed to the brim. I know some people criticize saying I put too much, you know, it's too full, but this is a full scale invasion, man. It's gonna be as packed to the brim with detail as possible. And I'm in love with this thing. In part five, this thing's gonna get floodified, but I want you guys to let me know what your favorite part of this diorama is so far. I'm gonna do part five in so much more detail, showing you the whole process. And I'm really, really proud to get back into it, you know? Diorama building is my absolute favorite thing to do with mega constructs, honestly. Like you can just pack so much in. So I really hope Hope you enjoyed today guys and I really do hope you guys get a chance to check out my patron it's a big change to my channel and I don't like asking directly but this is so I can improve my content like I want to be transparent I want to run less ads on my channel I want to make the content I want without worrying about 10 minutes long without worrying about putting mid rolls without worrying about plugging different things like I just I want to make my art the way I want to make my art and I want to have the opportunity to not be so reliant on crazy amounts of uploads and I want to be able to focus on large larger projects like dioramas that I'm not concerned about the upload date and pressures of keeping that ad revenue stream coming in. So thank you very much for tuning in today. This was another video with the domain. Please do at least take a minute to check out my Patreon and see what I'm all about. And as always, you stay awesome, you stay safe out there, folks. And the diorama in all its glory is signing off. <laughs>